Well, good evening everybody. Welcome to lesson number four. So my name is Dr. J.D. Swanson. I'm the author of Karate Science and this is really just some instructional videos while we're all sort of hankered away from the COVID virus to um, really help you expand and give you something to train on at home. The idea of these is I'm going to execute a small drill, something very simple, and then I'm going to sort of expand on it as we go. And the drill that we're going to do today actually expands over sort of multiple classes. So we're going to do the simple version today, today's going to be a little bit shorter, and then we're going to carry on and do the rest of it over the next couple of training sessions. So this one's fairly simple. This. Okay, so this one is a basic four-step drill. Okay, the idea here is about dropping your body weight out of Shizentai and into Zen Kutztach, both in a forward and reverse direction. This is one of my favorite drills, and it's a very, very simple one. So all you need to do is just stand here with your hands on your hips. You're gonna step forward into Zen Kutsudachi, making Hami. So it's a step forward, upon. Then from here, rotate, Shomen, knee. Then from here, pull back. Same thing, other leg. Itch, knee, good. Now back, this time stepping back with the right. Itch, knee, good. And once again with the left. Itch, knee, good. So it's a simple four step drill. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so nice and simple. Again, forward with the left, forward with the right, back with the right, back with the left. So again, what I want you to think about as you go, pretend as if you're a cat, right? A cat, wow, you throw it in there. I don't recommend you do this, but if you imagine a cat, when it falls, it lands on the ground, stick. Have that feeling. So as you step forward, simply drop your weight, stick your feet. So it's here, stick. Here, stick. Here, stick. Feel your feet grab into the floor. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Make sure that you have Hami and Shawman. So be very clear with your hip position. As you step forward, Hami, body weight outside edges of my feet. From there I switch from outside edges to forward. This way. Again, not this rolling feeling, but rather open to closed. This feeling. Again, knee. Sun. One more. She. Okay, nice and simple. From the side, okay, remember, it's important not to have this feeling of just step and roll forward. Don't let the weight come out of this leg. Rather, when you make that rotation, feel that push in the back leg. We've talked about this already before. So have the feeling of expanding, then contract and feel this rear leg push. The other thing that's important is make sure that the pivot is through this shoulder, through the front leg. So you're closing a door. That's the feeling you want. And feel that grip push into the leg. I'm on a spongy floor, so I can feel it real easily. If you're on carpet, Feel that feeling, feel the push of the rear foot into the floor each time. It shouldn't feel like it comes up. So what I want you to practice for a little while is just stepping forward. One, two, three, four. This feeling, okay? Right, once you've done that, now what I want you to do is add in the blocks. So we start with simply get umbarai. Feel the compression and exp or the expansion and compression of your movement. It should be a compression first as your feet, legs, body, center connect together. And then an expansion as you explode out. So it should be here. One. Okay, and slow motion. Stick. Stick. Keep your center as much as you can from rocking onto the sled. When you move slow, it's very hard. But feel if I move slowly, feel uh, almost this feeling, this uh, squeeze here. Not, don't arch everything up, just feel it squeeze, feel it squeeze in. Squeeze and push. The other thing to pay attention to 
is it's common practice you're always told at the beginning to have your feet shoulder width apart. If I do that, and I spoke about this in another video, your heel is actually not behind me. You want to be shoulder width, uh, hip width apart. This kind of feeling, so a little narrower. What this does for you is it ensures that my center line, my, the knot of my belt, comes directly forward. So as I squeeze, if I'm wide, it, it'll make this sort of semi-circular action which will change my trajectory of my technique on an angle rather than straight forward. I want to come straight to you. So as I'm moving here, if I move quick, because it's hard for me to control my weight slowly, if I come forward, the knot of my belt simply comes towards you. Even though my feet make that compression, I have to make that squeeze. These are fast twitch muscles in here. Think about it, if you're going to kick, get kicked square between the testicles, you're going to squeeze. So allow your hips and body to make that compression, not just up here, but mirror it here. So allow that to happen, and then expand the hip. Squeeze and push. Squeeze and push. Again, slowly, squeeze, squeeze and push. And again, have the whole movement synchronized together. So as my body contracts, feel that contraction. As my body expands, feel that expansion. So allow that to happen. So from here, you're just going to try the block and punch now. It'll go one, it'll go two, it'll go three, and it'll go four. Good. So if I move a little quicker, a little bit more my natural speed, it'll just be here. Two, three, and four, just like so. Again, make sure you make, make, make full hummy, compress your technique, squeeze through the feet, feel the grip on the floor, feel the compression of the breath, feel the arm and wrist rotate into position, then let it go immediately. That's the feeling you want. Now something a little bit more advanced, when we're thinking about that transition, you can also think some people quite often have a little bit of a double hip movement. You can or cannot do that. Sometimes I do, depends on the situation. Remember, when you make basic blocks, it's not just this part. When I think of get umbarai, I don't think just about this part. I'm thinking about this part, I'm thinking about this part or this part, all doing things, right? So when I think about the number of techniques I can get out of a single, a single uke, or, a, or sorry, a single waza, a single technique, it's multiple. So for me, when I do get a barai, I'm not just thinking about this part, the barai. I'm thinking about the block, the punch, the block, the punch, the empty, the slap, if I bring it out wide. And I'm thinking about all of that together. So it's important to pay attention to all those pieces. So what I can do is I can, if I'm beginning, just think of compression here, but if I'm thinking about actually pushing my hips slightly forward, I can do a slight, slight double hip action. Just here, forward back, forward back, just before the technique. This gives me a little bit of forward momentum to this technique here, rather than being arm only. Something for advanced people to play with a little bit. Again, you see it quite often, shituke, this double action, like so. So it's something to play with, again, very subtle. You don't want to be doing this, right? Just kind of looks like a waste of time. Subtle, think ticky, think ticky, think ticky as you make the technique. So once again, practice with get umbarai, get umbarai, get umbarai, get umbarai. Good. So try that for a little bit. Once you've done with that, the next step is of course now incorporate all of your blocks. So from here it'll be the same four steps, one, two, three, four. Now thinking about aguke, 
again, full and complete blocks. Complete motion of the argue cane. Complete motion of the argue cane. Think of it as an uppercut, rotate at the end as the wrist goes. Pump one, cover, 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 pull as it goes. And again, coordinating breath, body, movement, feet, all of those things. So again, that would be the standard one, two, three, four. Sotuke, same thing. Think full. Here, here, no matter, your choice, your flavor, whatever you've been taught. Here, parallel to the ground. Basic, kihon, teaching your body to move. So sotuke, one, three. Again, with soto, feel body. Feel the whole thing move as one unit. Not this, this. The whole thing moves together. So allow, three. Again, multiple blocks. Oh, here comes an attack. Whoop. Here comes a punch. Whoop. Here comes another block. Here comes a strike as I move back. All of these things are alive and well. So as you feel, punch. Same thing with Uchuke. Load. Compress. Again, hip, body, squeeze, hip, push. Last one, Shituke, Kokutsudach, feel, load, 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 drop. Feel the stance hit and connect. Then from here, just like we are talking about the other day, drive straight off the sled. And again, with that drive, allow this and this to be a straight line towards you. My foot simply moves because I need room for my hips. So this is like an arrow straight towards you. This technique hits. So have that feeling. Don't and don't. Together, one shot, back leg, in. So what you've got there now, is you've got all four movements, all five blocks. Get a marae, one, two, three, four. Aguke, one, two, three, four. Sotuke, one, two, three, four. Uchuke, one, two, three, four. Kokut Shutuke, shift into Zenkuts, driving your body center forward. Hit your target one two three four so practice that for a little bit and then I've got one more point one more thing to play with okay so the last thing to play with is playing with the timing of the hip so when you're beginning what you'll find is that your motion can be very much with hip so this is something for the advanced people to think about so when you're here you can make your whole motion Elbow, hip, body, synchronous, synchronous. And you must be able to do this. If you cannot synchronize your hip, elbow, leg, back leg, it's hard to do karate. So really think about that. Don't make it, and I'll add ninja music. Not this, don't make it separate, make it together, together. So as you make that movement, you can make it that way. But what if you want to work on making your hips just that little bit sharper? Leave the hips to the end. So what I'm saying is just play with this. Play here, make your compression, bring the leg forward as far as you can, then use this rear leg and this hip to drive. Then close the door. So from here, feel, leave, leave, and use that to make that explosiveness of the hip. Leave, rather than just down. And that will help you, as you practice, develop your hip movement and the firing, especially as you move not only forward, but also backwards. Feel here, compress, feel, feel here, one, really drive that rear leg back to make that strong position. Then once you've driven that rear leg back, feel the compression in the hip and drive with the punch. Corkut starch. Feel. 
then rah, let it go. So I hope that gives you something to play with for today. Um, today was a long day for me. I had a 12 hour long teleconference. That was exciting. Um, and what will happen is I'll be back tomorrow. So as always, quick shout out. I've been talking to Guy Bradeur up in Canada. He's got some excellent videos that he's putting out on the hand cutter.